All righty, folks, we are recording the daily financial news for Saturday, April 15th, which is tax day for most of the country. I guess, well, technically it's Monday, but you know what I mean. April 15th is often called tax day, except if you are in California. Much of California's taxes are not due state or federal until October. Don't know if you all knew that, but yes, uh, they have been extended to October, which is very, it's a good thing. If you owe a bunch of money, why would you send in your taxes early? Wait till October, get some interest. Let's talk about single family homes and CoreLogic. CoreLogic has gone out with uh, kind of updates on rent. There is a lot of talk about rents collapsing. We've done that a bunch on this channel. It is multifamily, AKA apartments, 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 apartments. CoreLogic came out with a single family rent study and year on year, single family rents are up 5.7%. This is something that I've talked about a bunch on this channel. We've debated with many of the experts. Apartment rents, syndications, all of that stuff. We know that there's going to be declining rents, increasing occupancies, higher cap rates, higher interest, lots and lots of pain. This is why I have focused on single families. It is in demand. Once a tenant gets in single family, they want to stay. So you are seeing sticky rent in uh, single family. Larry Fink of BlackRock is talking about inflation getting very stubborn at 4%. Because of that, he thinks rates stay higher for longer than the market is expecting. He is talking about potentially 18 to 24 months, so quite a bit longer. It will be interesting to see uh, because once housing rolls over, uh, I think, again, for what it is worth, again, it's one man's guess, one man's opinion. Uh, I think we actually get into the threes. Uh, we don't get below three, but we do get into the three. So we will see uh, where we're at. I think that begins in July or August, uh, but that is just around the corner. Not sure if you heard this, but it looks like Best Buy is starting to lay off store employees. Yes, shopping trends have changed. More people going online. And of course, consumers are pulling back. We obviously pulled forward a lot of computers and TVs and all of this where we are staying home. We are no... We are not kind of continually upgrading those. So yes, Best Buy really showing you <laughs> that retail uh, is probably in for a rough, rough, um, rough go of it here for a little bit. Um, what else do we got? 70% of Americans are financially stressed. I always wonder, how do you, how do you measure financially stressed? Uh, it looks like now 58% of folks are living paycheck to paycheck. These are, these are scary numbers. Uh, putting numbers out like this are interesting, but what are we going to do about them? Because wishing them away or hoping them away or putting your head in the sand is not helpful. How do we how do we do better? This is one of the reasons why I think Dave Ramsey rocks. Dave Ramsey attacks this problem. Dave Ramsey is for the 70% of folks that are financially stressed, is for the 58% that live paycheck to paycheck. It looks like it is very clear that the economy is slowing down, uh, manufacturing, retail, uh, all of that. Uh, I do believe this is still leading to a 25 basis point and final rate increase on May 3rd. I will say it's interesting that more and more people are talking about a, a, at least one more rate increase. We will see. I've, I've said it before and we'll say it again here. I actually think May 3rd Fed meeting is horrible timing. It is probably a week, maybe 10 days before we start seeing economic metrics because of the banking crisis. Right now, a lot of the data coming out is kind of pre-Silicon Valley Bank, pre-Signature, pre-Credit Suisse. And we won't really know about the consumer's health until after the Fed rate. Increase on May 3rd. Again, I'm calling for 25 basis points, uh, but it is very, very interesting. Um, UBS uh, estimates that there will be 50,000 retail uh, locations closed uh, in the next, uh, by 2025. I'm sorry, in the next five years. Let me correct that. The next five years, UBS estimates 50,000 retail locations will be closing in the next five years. Pretty crazy. David Rubenstein is talking about First Republic Bank not being out of trouble. Uh, it has to be, again, this is David Rubenstein, has to be on the FDIC watch list. It says that no buyer is going to come in and buy First Republic unless FDIC takes it over. Folks, if you don't know what that means, essentially 
Uh, First Republic Bank, according to David Rubenstein, has a large hole in their balance sheet. So the only way it can get acquired is for FDIC to shut it down, take it over, and then basically keep the toxic stuff and sell the good portions. Uh, so again, that is according to David Rubenstein. Um, Jamie Dimon, kind of the last thing for this, uh, this Saturday wrap-up on the 15th. Jamie Dimon. Interest rates are going to be higher for longer. They are going to, quote unquote, undress problems in the economy. Jamie Dimon is pointing at something that you and I have been talking about quite a bit, and that is floating rate debt. Smaller banks could fail. When I hear Jamie Dimon talking about floating rate debt, they will undress problems in the economy. I can't help but think about billionaire Barry. Yes, folks, Billionaire Bear, we've talked about a bunch on this channel. He's the billionaire that goes on CNBC with PowerPoint slides. Not a good look, Barry. Not a good look. Uh, and then talks about uh, basically inflation is falling faster and all of those things. When I look at what Barry's talking about and I think about what his portfolio may have, it may have floating rate debt. I think what Jamie Dimon is pointing out to us, folks, is there's a lot of pain that's still out there. The Fed is going to raise. The Fed is going to be higher for longer. And eventually when this floating rate, floating rate debt comes due, we are going to see, to quote Warren Buffett, who is swimming naked. Again, you have a choice in this situation. You can get enamored and look at the naked people. Or you can do what we do at one rental at a time and look at the ground. Look at the ground. See what assets they have been forced to sell to raise liquidity. There will be people in a financial bind that will sell assets at a discount to raise cash. That is what I am looking for. And again, on that end, we are in the first inning. This probably doesn't become a big thing until Q4 or Q1 of next year, but you need to get ready now. One of the things that you need to be doing is you should be attending an event I have on Sunday, uh, the 23rd. It is with three amazing real estate investors, real estate agents. You're going to get to talk to a top 1% agent. Talk to somebody who started with a W-2 and transition and somebody who's been investing for 30 plus years. You want to ask them questions. You want to ask them how to get in front of the right people. You want to ask them about networking. You want to ask them about what they are doing now. Trust me, you want to be at this event. It's 47 bucks, three hours, all driven by you. We just did a four-hour session with the real estate legends and it was all driven by the audience. Chat, live questions. That's what we do here. No PowerPoint interactive. You have questions, come ask Beth Traverso, Jason Pritchard, and Ty, T-Y-L-G. Uh, I'll leave a link below. All right. Take care. Bye.